What is up, Karatics? Welcome back to the series where I customize and review past DLC and OG vehicles. Never got the chance to because I didn't start making car customization videos till about late 2015. Again, guys, let me know in the comments what car from late 2015 and older you want me to customize next, and I'll display the most liked vehicle suggestion comment in the next customization video. So, in today's video, we're going to be customizing the Vapid FMJ. Now, I did customize this vehicle in the past, but that video had no commentary, and a lot of you guys wanted me to redo it. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So this car came out with the Further Adventures and Finance and Felony update in June of 2016. It can be purchased from a legendary Motorsport website for $1.75 million, which is definitely a ton of money, but with its beautiful styling, it's very difficult to put a price on this specific car. It just looks super crazy, like a concept car. Now, in terms of performance, the FMJ is a pretty good car, although it doesn't perform that great on bumpy city roads like other supercars. It's intended more for flat tracks at the airport or, of course, flat stunt props. Now, on most tracks, it's around the pace of the regular Nero and the Tyrus, so not terrible. There's just so many new supercars that have released over the years that this one has been pushed further and further down the top list. But honestly, the main reason most players, including myself, love this car is mainly because of its gorgeous styling. And honestly, this is my favorite car in GTA in terms of styling alone. Now, my favorite car overall in the game is the XA21. So that's why I don't like the FMJ as much because that's not really the overall package for me. So for one, they gave it the exhaust note of the Entity XF, which doesn't really suit this car that well. It doesn't sound at all like the real-life EcoBoost V6, and even if they couldn't give it that kind of exhaust note, I think it would have been funny for Rockstar to give it a V8 exhaust note. You know, Rockstar does weird things, I think that would have been a great opportunity, but they didn't really do that either. They just kind of lazily copied and pasted the Entity XF exhaust note. Not really that great. Another thing I don't like about the car is the situation with the way the door is open, so they open normally, unlike the real 4 GT, which the doors open upwards like butterfly doors, just super nice. These again open normally, and when that happens, you get this super wide door because of the bodywork, and it's just a very awkward look. The design was just not meant for normal opening doors, and this definitely proves that. But if you can overlook those things, I think the FMJ is still a great car. But anyways, in terms of what the FMJ is based on, it's primarily based on the 2017 Ford GT. However, they did give it the front end of the Aston Martin Vulcan, which is kind of cool. A little different and strange, but it really works well. It doesn't look bad. Now, I personally would have preferred the front end of the actual Ford GT or something similar, but as we know with Rockstar, they love to randomly mix cars together. And if this car would have come out with the tuners update, I'm sure it would have looked almost identical to the real car because... Most of the cars on the tuners update were very close to the real life counterparts, but anyways, on this Ford GT topic, I still can't believe we don't have the 1960s GT40 in game. It honestly boggles my mind that we have the bullet based on the 05 GT, and of course the FMJ mainly based on the 2017 Ford GT, but we still don't have the legendary 1960s GT40, which is a legend, it really is, but Anyways, let's go ahead and check out the customization of the FMJ. What are we doing today? All right, FMJ. Kind of a play on words of the bullets, full metal jacket, very cool. All right, armor, brakes, bumpers. So you have primary color trim, matte black trim and then carbon trim. I don't know why it says carbon splitter because carbon splitter is the same throughout so it's just carbon trim. So <laughs> I guess we'll do the carbon trim there. Engine, lights, throw some xenons on there. Plate, I do have my GT plate for this. Looks phenomenal, love it. Respray, um, for this I do want to stick to the, you know, that traditional Ford GT blue, the color it was unveiled in. Um, and I want to go a bit darker than what the actual car is. I think the closest to that one would probably be a regular blue with an ultra blue pearl. Um, but I do want to go a little bit darker. Um, well, quite a bit darker. <laughs> We're going to go with the dark blue uh, with the ultra blue pearl. And I think it just looks phenomenal on this car. It just suits it so well. We'll do that. A uh, Kremlin for this car goes on the door. You can see there. 
All right, roof scoops. So you have this one here. Uh, then you got these back here, different color variations. So I mean, this is pretty cool. It's very similar to the Ford GT race car. So I think that's pretty sick. But I don't know. I, I, I kind of like to see my engine back here. I mean, and we're not really going for a race car build. So um, I don't know. And the roof scoop up here looks a bit tacky. It just doesn't look right. I prefer the smooth roof line. I feel like this breaks it up too much. You know, all personal preference when it comes to an option like this. But um, I don't know. I feel it's a bit too big on the roof. And the one back here covers the engine. Just not for me. Uh, continuing spoiler upgrade. So stock spoiler. You have the brake light, the third brake light up there, which I think is super, super cool. Really nice detail. Um, however, and if I give it some throttle here, you can see I go on and off. Um, but unfortunately, when you choose any spoiler upgrade, it removes that third brake light. A bit unfortunate. I wish they would have kept it for this kind of like ducktail option they have here, which is just super cool. Absolutely love that. Um, so you have two different ducktails there, a smaller one and a bigger one. Then you have a giant carbon wing mounted at the center. Then you have the GT wing, which is very similar to the Ford GT race car again. Very cool options here. So I mean, you can pretty much do a full-on uh, Ford GT race car build. You know, you put the wing, you put the roof scoop that goes on the engine cover, and you pretty much have a very cool uh, race car build. But yeah, um, I think I'm going to go for the ducktail, honestly. And unfortunately, the spoiler does not have the active arrow function. I think that would have been amazing, especially when you take it off. You can see just the gap there looks strange. Um, all right, we'll do a low-level spoiler. Suspension. I think we should lower it. Let's lower it all the way. Wow, this thing goes really low. It's been a while since I've customized it. That's quite a jump for a car like this, but it looks sick lowered like that, so we'll do that. Transmission, turbo, wheels. Okay, so I love the stock wheels on the FMJ, very nice, but you can't paint them, unfortunately. They're stuck in chrome, which doesn't really look too great on a car this new, at least to me. So um, we're going to change them to a very similar wheel, um, but it has some concave, and that is the Mercy Concaves. Um, yeah, a lot of people poke fun at me for putting this wheel on a lot of my builds, but to me, it's the nicest wheel by far in the game. Um, it's just gorgeous, and I think nothing suits this car more than these wheels, or obviously the regular Mercy wheels, but the concave ones give it a nice touch, especially on this back wheel. You can see that concave there just looks amazing. So I'm going to do that, paint them black. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. Or you know what? You know what? We'll do carbon black, just so that it's a, not just a pure black. It looks a bit better. Um, continuing here, windows... Uh, should we black them out? I don't know. Is it tint our back glass? Ah, it does. Hmm. I don't want to hide that engine bay too much. I guess we'll do the light smoke. All right. So that's all the options there. Um, before I forget, a secondary color is your brake calipers and also the front uh, bumper trim around the splitter. Uh, as we were looking at earlier, that's you know if you keep it secondary or whatever. But we did carbon, so that's not there. So I believe it's the calipers and the interior stitching. Yep, calipers and interior stitching. So very cool. Um, I think we're just going to make that match. We'll just do the uh, dark blue. All right, let's go ahead and back out. Exit to ground. All right, let's rev it up here. Not really all that exciting. Pretty much copied and pasted from the Entity XF. First person, at least they gave it a different interior. They didn't just paste in the interior from the Adder and the 9F. <laughs> they just, they actually gave it, you know, a decent interior, which is nice. And the carbon firewall as well looks great. The seats, not too bad. Overall, pretty decent. All right, let's uh, let's floor it here. Not bad, not bad. Great acceleration. Bit of wheel spin, but. And this is a very, very quick car. I love how low it is as well. And wide. Great, great car. Now this car is a bit unstable in certain bumpy situations. Um, unlike other supercars which absorb it very well. This one you have to be very careful when going around certain corners. Um, but... On flat surfaces, this thing is a monster. It handles very, very well. 
uh, back when this car came out, there wasn't really anything that handled like this. Um, it was kind of like the first crazy handling supercar, um, obviously on flat surfaces. This is before the RE7B existed and all that stuff, so... Yeah. Awesome, awesome car. Full throttle action here. This corner. A little bit of traction loss, but it, it holds it well. Forced it there. Look at that. What a car. <laughs> what a car. Now this one, I believe, to mid-drive it, you have to combine the regular brake with it. Let me try, because I forgot. Launch. Oh, you don't. Okay, so just handbrake for that. Nice. Wow. I love the FMJ. I really do. Alright, let's pull over so we can see what opens, because I actually don't know. <laughs> I haven't driven this in so long, I don't know what doors and stuff open, so... We'll pull over over here to see all that really quick. I guess we'll just park here, that's fine. Okay. Vehicle doors, let's see. Vehicle doors, all. Only the doors, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's a bit underwhelming. <laughs> oh, man. On the real car, uh, the center section here opens up and you can actually, you know, see your engine bay and all that. Um, this one, it doesn't, it's fixed. Okay, I mean, I didn't expect the front trunk to open, but I, I you know, which, in this car, I don't think it even has any space there, it's just a bunch of areas to put fluids. Um, but I, I honestly expected this part to open up. Unfortunately, it, it doesn't. Kind of sad, but... And the door situation I talked about earlier, I really wish they would would have opened upwards, but... I mean, if you can look past all that, I mean, this car is just so, so cool, and that it's design itself, I mean, I can't believe they kept, you know, the signature design from the actual 4 GT with the flying buttresses, I mean, you can literally see right through the car, I just love it, what, a, what an amazing, phenomenal design that Ford did, um, it's just so beautiful and different, and I mean, it really looks like a concept car, it, it really, really does, and it's actually a production car, which is just crazy to think about, but... Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to let me know down below in the comments what car from late 2015 and old you want me to customize next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.